Paula Cooper's release from prison was supposed to be a new beginning, but she could never be free of her past. Arrested at 15 for a grisly murder, Cooper by 16 was one of the youngest people on death row. I mean, for maybe 10, 15 years into my sentence, I really didn't even understand what happened. Honestly, I, I mean, I sat and tried to figure it all out. In 1985, Cooper and three other girls knocked on Ruth Pelkey's Gary, Indiana home, pretending to be interested in Bible lessons. Cooper stabbed the devout Christian 33 times with a butcher knife. The group ransacked the house, took $10, and stole the 78-year-old's car. Ruth's grandson, Bill Pelkey, sat in the courtroom when Cooper learned her fate. But I just remember thinking, you're smiling now, but when this day's over with, you won't be smiling anymore. No one had told her that she wasn't going to be taken out and executed at any time. She didn't understand the appellate process. Because of her young age, Cooper became an international cause celeb for anti-death penalty crusaders. Her case even drew a clemency plea from Pope John Paul II and someone else. Somebody in the right mind doesn't take a 12-inch a, a butcher knife and stab somebody 33 times. It, what had happened today was a crazy, crazy, senseless act. And, you know, the, my faith was actually calling me to forgive. Pelkey says that's what his grandmother would have done, too. So he reached out to Cooper. The two forged a friendship, exchanging hundreds of letters over the years. You know, I cry every time I think about your grandma. The others think it's a joke because you all let them be free. I'm not an evil person or whatever you think of me to be. He visited her in prison 14 times. I don't mind writing you whenever you want to write. No matter what you feel, I will love all of your family. In 1989, the Indiana Supreme Court overturned Cooper's execution and she was ordered to serve 60 years. While inside, she earned a college degree. Cooper was eventually paroled after 27 years for good behavior. In a 2012 interview with the Times of Northwest Indiana, Cooper expressed optimism about her future. I mean, I don't care if I have to sweep floors, wash dishes, or flip hamburgers, I'm going to take whatever I can get. She worked her way up at a burger chain. She also reconnected with Monica Foster, the appeals defense attorney who took her case. Foster hired her as a legal assistant. You know, she really became the soul of this office, I would have to say. She understood the clients that we represent and their fears, their vulnerabilities, their loved ones' fears and vulnerabilities. Cooper also found love. She was just always so bubbly and excited about life. LaShawn Davidson asked her to marry him, but he noticed a pain behind her smile. I just don't think she understood how to, to get past what she done. Others noticed as well. A lot of people forgave her, but I think at the end of the day, she never forgave herself for what she did. On Memorial Day, two years out of prison and 45 years old, Cooper left goodbye notes to her friends and family. She wrote to her fiance, I took a life and never felt worthy. The next morning, she shot herself. Well, um, I, I got on my computer and I saw an email that my daughter had just sent. And she said, Dad, I'm so sorry. I clicked on the link. And it was a breaking news out of Indianapolis that Paula Cooper uh, was dead of an apparent suicide. Society handed Paula Cooper a death sentence and then a reprieve. She worked hard to redeem herself, but in the end, her guilt and shame were a death sentence too. John Mon Associated Press.